good people what's good people big rich from the big rich live on the mic radio show here on youtube welcome to this edition of what's the real deal we're gonna have a fairly short show uh this evening because uh i got a family date so i won't be on here long um i condensed the show to two topics one topic i was actually asked uh, last week, I want to say, and I just didn't get a chance to get to it. So I'll jump on it this time. And, um, the other one is just something that came out this week and, uh, we'll just discuss it. Uh, I know a lot of you been chopping it back and forth on Twitter with me about it. So, you know, I, I finally agreed to just talk about it here and, um, send it out over the net if you will so the first thing before we even start you know how i how i do i get uh, our social media out of the way twitter capital b capital r live on the mic instagram ig big rich live on the mic underscore between each word our email address is big rich live on the mic at gmail.com no no sorry not for this um, I'm so used to saying it, not for this show. It's um, what's the real deal 68 at gmail.com. That's what's the real deal 68 gmail at gmail.com. But the website is www.bigrichlivewonamike.com and Facebook and blackspot.com's pages are black are backspace Big Rich Live on the Mic. So like, share, and subscribe. Um, Put this on your social media platform, put this on your Twitter, put this on your black spot, put this on your Facebook um, and push it out. Each one teach one. That's how we do here. Uh, that's how we build our platform. So far, we sort of stagnated around fourteen hundred. So um, we try to put some things in place uh, so we can try to double that before the end of the summer. But what I will I, I do owe an apology because I got a whole bunch of tweets and dms about the uh new show uh, african-american news was supposed to debut yesterday but um i'm just not ready yet and matter of fact i had a meeting with somebody who is going to be the first guest and my dumb behind i totally forgot to lock him down because we had to go to the hospital to um see about a good friend dmac you know, he's he's uh, doing well. Uh, you probably will watch this because you are bedridden for a little bit. So I uh, love you, brother. It was good to see you. I'm glad you're up and about. And, um, you know, shoot, you're just going to keep making it do what it do. So that was on my mind. So I apologize for not locking uh, my first guest down for next Thursday's show, the inaugural show. But I'll get it. You know, we will definitely do it for sure, for sure. So um, what we're going to talk about is a new book called uh, Black Privilege, Opportunities Come to Those Who Create It. And it's um, made by, written by, produced by Charlemagne the God. Anybody who don't know Charlemagne the God, his real name is Leonard uh, McKelvey. He's professionally known as Charlemagne the God, and he's an American radio Pres, um, you know, presence and TV and television personality. He's the co-host for nationally syndicated radio show, The Breakfast Club with DJ Envy and Angela Yee. I read a few excerpts from this book. Uh, I've listened to a lot of people who are reviewing this book, who has reviewed this book, who are a lot more in the know than I am, a lot smarter than I am. And First of all, a lot of people who are in the conscious community, woke, if you will, was just flabbergasted about the title of the book, Black Privilege. We're going to break down the, 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 the entire title, but the first part of it, Black Privilege, there is no such thing as Black Privilege. No such thing at all. I don't care how you slice it, how you want to make it so. There is no such thing as black privilege. And what kills me is when you have people who don't know that or they want to put across because see, I don't know Charlemagne. 
Okay, I don't know him, you know, at all. I think he, you know, some people call him a coon. I just think he's an idiot. But it is what it is. That's my opinion. I don't know him, so I'm not going to say that that he wants to do something detrimental. But people who are not in the conscious community that really don't look into things and look at what I call the big picture. And no, it's not a conspiracy because I know some people are going to hit me back and be like, oh, it's, it's just a conspiracy theory. No, it is called the big picture. The big picture is when you have idiots like this who do that black privilege. What he does is either knowing or unknowing. And I'm going to put it that he just didn't know. I'm not going to say that he knew because if you knew and you still did it, then that comes out that you don't care, whatever that might be. Sorry about that. Had some technical difficulties. You know, it's one thing that really is funny and I guess sort of sad is that I don't like to, to read the instructions, right? So we have a new camera. We sitting on, we shooting on the Lumex G7. Um, and we took away the Sony A5100 because I just didn't like the overheating process. We're actually within hopefully the next month, we're going to upgrade to the Lumex G5, GH5, which just came out. It has continuous, but it continuous, um, uh, recording and I don't have to worry about chopping it up and it overheating anything like that. So, you know, it is what it is. So getting back to what I was saying about Charlemagne, when you have people like him that's in position where they say they utter pure nonsense that there is a such thing as black privilege, you you give credence to the races and the bigots of the world of this country to be like, well, see, there is black privilege. See, that's why we have to stomp down on them. We got to take away there's black, there's black privilege because a lot of the white supremacists and bigots and, and, you know, Mr. King's, the, 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 these idiots, Louis Gohmert's, the rest of them, they don't think this is anything like anything called white privilege. And Stevie wonder who blind knows that they're white, there's white privilege. So if you think that there's no white privilege, but I'm telling you there's black privilege, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think to cert certain people are going to try to do? So that was just ignorant to say. And then it's then the, the rest of the, the, uh, the title opportunity comes to those who create it. Really? So bruh. So basically what you think, what you trying to say is you created your opportunity. So because you created your opportunity, everybody else can create their opportunities. First and foremost, let, let me say a couple of things. One, that right there don't work for black people, not as a whole. Yeah, you get a few crabs that jump out the barrel, but not as a whole. That is the exception, not the rule, first of all. Second of all, fool, do you think that you are the best and the only one that can do what you do? I'm not going to throw shade on a man, but he ain't the best guy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he ain't the most articulate. He's not the smartest. He's not the smoothest. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you think you the only cat that can do it? Do you not know that there are people who are more qualified and educated to do what you do, but they can't do it? You know what I'm saying? So what the hell? Yes, granted, I, I'm with you. You know, he used, if, if you know anything about Charlemagne, I'm not going to call him like certain other people's call him by his real name, Leonard or Leonard. I'm not going to do that. Charlemagne is Charlemagne. Okay. <clears throat> but if you know his history, if you if you don't, Wikipedia, and he doesn't hide it. You know what I mean? He sold drugs. He's from South Carolina. He sold drugs, went to prison, all that type of stuff there. Woo, woo, woo. Was able to get out or get his GED in prison. Was able to then get out of the rat race. He was able to get out of the rat race. And then he jumped with Wendy Williams. They did a radio show down south. Then Wendy called behind up to New York to get her her show to start going on tv Charlemagne was sort of left to his own vices for a little while then he wind up excuse me coming to new york and getting hooked up with uh, dj envy and angela yee and you know i don't know how much paper he pulling but he pulling either high six figures or low seven figures a year you feel me so i'm not shitting on him throwing any shade on him at all not at all you know what I'm saying? More power to you, bro. But for you to put up a, a book and before you even open the pages, you put out something black privilege, which there's no such thing, never have been, especially in this country. 
And then opportunity comes to those who create it. And that's it. Basically saying that if you create your opportunity, you can get it. That's bullshit. Sorry. That's crap. It, it, it's crap. Now, if you, again, like I said, I didn't read the book. I read er, er, excerpts of the book, you know, where he was like, well, you know, I have to believe, I believe in black privilege. I have to believe in, in, in that privilege or else I couldn't have made it. So basically somebody said this, somebody summed it up and I'll give give her the, the credit, Yvette Carnell of breakingbrown.com. She gave this analogy. She said, okay, so basically what you're saying is you made it because you lied to yourself. Because if I'm telling you and you know, and there's no data, there's no facts that there's a black privilege, but you saying that there is, and you saying that you must force yourself to believe that, then that means you must lie to yourself to, to achieve what you achieve. And I just feel it's just dangerous. You know, I just feel it, it's just dangerous. Sometimes we just don't think. And I understand where some people, because I get this a lot. Some people's like, look, I I understand I'm a black woman or a black man or or whatever it might be, but I just want to be me. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have the weight of my people on my shoulders. Well, two things to that. First, when much is given, much is required. That's first and foremost. Second, sorry, it's just just how it is. There's so many, there's so few of us who gets through to do anything. You got to reach back, bro. And you might sit around and look at his book, you know, read some more excerpts on how he made and he did his hustle. He did. But there was still somebody somewhere that had to open up some door. Nobody. All of this self-made crap. And I'm not saying that's what Charlemagne said, but I've said this on many of shows. There's no such thing as a self-made man or woman. No, somebody did something, whether you know it or not, to us to aid you in what you what you've achieved. Sorry, that's how it is. Now you might say I achieved this on my own uh, God-given ability. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. But who told you or who showed you how to harness? that God given ability. Cause let me tell you something. Somebody who come out the room, don't know how to run a football. Don't know how to dribble a ball. Don't know how to paint a, 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 a um, like Mozart, not a Mozart, um, um, direct a symphony, symphony like Mozart or paint like Da Vinci. You have to learn that you have to be inspired that. So even if you could sit up there and say, there was nobody who personally assisted me, maybe that may be right. That may be wrong. I lean more to it being wrong. But the fact of the matter is something motivated you. Somebody along the way motivated you. looked at somebody and you self-taught. Like as far as me and graphics, I'm self-taught for graphics. But I can't sit up here and say I've gotten as good as I am now on my own. I've looked at other people's stuff. I've piggybacked off of other people's stuff. You know, I learn what they do and then I try to replicate it. No such thing as a self-made person. So I've just felt that it's just real dangerous. Now, some people say he needed a ghost rider because there was a lot of ignorant stuff put in there, but that's an ignorant man, you know? So, I mean, it is what it is. But the fact of the matter is what you got to realize is and always realize it, that you black, bro. And there are plenty of people. I mean, look at me. Look at me. I have an MBA. I have my own business. I'm retired. I work now for, you know, in a field that I love. But I ain't, I, I, I'm, I'm not the only brother that can do that shit, man. I mean, really, I'm not. I'm not the only person that can do that. So I'm not going to sit up there and be like, toot my own. Well, I made it. Why can't you? Well, all do through the grace of God, I was able to have the life that I have because I had a mom that, that kept her thumb on me, that kept me around her that kept me out of trouble, that motivated me to do something. Charlemagne could have got arrested more than he did. He got arrested once, went to, went to jail, okay? But in his book, he says that he slang, he slang dope for quite a few, for, for a, a while. Could have got arrested, ran from the police, all of that type of stuff. So if things had a little bit different than you, you might be doing 30 years of life now. 
So come on, bruh. You know, we got to we got to be better than this. You know, I have conversations with my wife all the time. And me and her are totally different. Now we're both conscious people. We're both, you know, pro pro black empowerment. You know, we're 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 pro getting along and all of that type of stuff. You know, I think we're both pro uh, reparations. I don't know. I need to ask her that. But we think differently. She looks at somebody and is willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not willing to give anybody the benefit of the doubt. Not now. Not in today's thing. I, unless I see it, unless I know it. I'm not necessarily going blindly and, and, and following stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just not doing that. I'm really not. So that's it. That's. My opinion on the book, you know, um, I'm probably not going to read it. You know, I, the excerpts to me were, were, were enough in the reviews and stuff like that. So, you know, now what I might do is, you know, I might buy a copy just to support the brother. You know what I'm saying? Just because I disagree with him, you know, I don't want him to crash and burn. But I do feel that we we need to be better. We need to be better. We need to hold our people accountable because it's, it's just crazy. Second and last subject is um, the New England Patriots. Last week, they decided, and it wasn't they. It was, let me see, it's like 65 people on the team. It was like 32 showed up, 17 of them were African-American. And they decided to show up um, to the White House and step and fetch it and take a picture uh, with President Tangerine. And a lot of people blew up about that. And a lot of people blew up about that, not because of the white players. You expect that. And, that, and that's, that's, that's messed up to have to say. But you expect that. It's hard for you to understand. I can't say that. Let me, let me, let me scratch that. It's not hard for you to understand because what, if, if that's true, then I am believing that most people are ignorant. Most people are not ignorant. It's harder for you to understand something that has never affected you. You follow what I'm saying? So white players and stuff like that, they necessarily, oh, my God, <coughs> excuse me. Um, they have never been discriminated against or anything like that. You know, so you sort of expect that, you know, okay, even though a number of white players did not go. My problem with and what I've been asked to talk about is the 17 African-American players that decided to go. Now, I'm going to put it right out there. There is um, Minister Farrakhan said it. A lot of other people said it. So this is not from me like I, I made this. But there, uh, Warren Sapp said it. You know, it, it, there is a, a saying or a phrase called million dollar slave. All 17 of them, them clowns are slaves, million dollar slaves. You might say, well, Rich, you are being very harsh. Why do you say that? I'll say, well, this is why I say. Anybody who's listened to this, listen to me on this show or Big Rich Live, I have said that I agree when people say that you must go to talk to the president if the president wants to talk. You should sit down and break bread and discuss things and be at the table when decisions and policies are being made. I'm all for that. I think you are a fool not to if you are invited. And if you are not qualified to go, you still go, but you bring people who are qualified with you. This wasn't the case. I know for a fact. I ain't telling you what I know. I'm scared. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. They had less than five minutes with the president. Now, Bill, uh, the um, Bill, whatever his name is. I'm sorry, the, the coach and the owner, Mr. Kraft, and Bill Belichick. There you go. They had more time with him because they had prior relationships with him. But the players had about five minutes. And all it was, a quick shake to hand as he went down. Now, their tour of the White House was different. 
But I'm talking about with the president. You had less than five minutes. So basically what you're saying now, and again, let's let's say this here again. You if you're not millionaires, you are hundreds of thousandaires. So that means you can go to you can go to the White House on your own and bring your family and have a tour of the White House if that's what you want to do. Very rarely do you see more, if anything, when you're there as a team than when you're regular. Yeah, granted, you 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 see the rotunda with, with, with the stairs. You're on the lawn. You know what I'm saying? But look at the pictures that I put up there. This arrogant fool and everybody behind him, I, I wish they would have published a full shot because, you know, I looked online and I couldn't find one. Anybody knows one, send it to me. They just standing up there like slaves, you know, like like deer in the headlights. A, you're not there to talk policy. B, even if you thought you was going to be able to, to, to uh, talk policy or hand him something, the Secret Service wasn't going to allow you to hand him nothing. You don't have the time to do anything other than sit there like a monkey and shake hands. You are not getting paid for it. It's not mandatory. So what the hell was you there for? And don't sit up there and tell me, oh, well, I'm trying to be a team player. What the hell happened to the other 30-something-odd 30, 30 people, players that didn't go? They weren't being team players. And you had people like Martellus Bennett, who's no longer with the team. But you have him and a bunch of others put down there and say why they wasn't going. My thing is this. I'm African-American. Yeah, yeah, I'm black. I'm black. If you talk bad about Hispanics and dog them out, if you talk bad about Asians, dog them out, throw them out of the country, take their voting rights. You are in a party who as who it has been proven has taken my voting rights from my people. By you standing up there. Behind this president is a it w amounts to you co-signing what the hell he's doing. Whether you want to believe it or not, because look at the chatter. The chatter is, let me count how many black people. Why is those why is those men standing behind him? Why? Do you know? I mean, I mean, just think about it. And this is what kills me about my people. Do you know what message, how, what a powerful message that would have sent? Now, Fox News would have called you a whole bunch of eight ungrateful N-words. They would have said that, but they would have been talking about it all day. CNN would have been talking about it. MSNBC would have been talking about TV. One would have been talking about BET would have been talking about it. The AP would have been talking about it. ESPN would have been talking about it. Fox Sports News would have been talking about it. You know what type of powerful message. That would have sent for the people who give a damn, which is the majority of this country. It had been like you excuse my friends. I'm going to use the curse. You fuck with them. You fuck with us all. You mess with voting rights. You mess with us all. So what we're going to do is we're not showing up. Not one of us. So if you want to sit up there and have because think about it. I said 30 or they said they said 35 players show 17 of them was African-Americans. Do the math. Do the math. You take 17 off. What's it? Four, 13? 13 people? 13 players. But we can't get together to do shit together. Nothing. We can't get together to do nothing. 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 So you got these people who, again, there's no justification. Don't give me that crap. Oh, I wanted to go to the White House. You are at least a multi-thousandaire. You can go to the White House anytime you want to in the offseason and bring your whole family. But again, is that yes or boss mentality? Is that paid slave mentality? Oh, well, I know Mr. Kraft and Mr. Belichick are personal friends of, of, of them, and I'm a practice squad player, or I'm fighting for my job, or I'm looking for a new contract, so maybe I need to be a good little boy. And the wild thing is, 
they'll they they'll cuss me out. Wanna wanna fight me for saying that. But that's what it's that's what it, that's what it is. That's what it looks like. And we need to be better than that. We need to do better than that. We really do. We really do. We need to have a we need to be on code to be like you screw with one of us, you screw with all of us. Period. Period. I cannot, you know, period, in all good faith, I cannot stand behind you smiling. And 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 and, and to their credit, the majority of them weren't smiling. Matter of fact, the one guy you can see, the brother you can see in, in the picture that I put up, he looked like he was scowling both times. But I can't, in good faith, shake your hand and take a picture behind you knowing the racist stuff. This is not something where you'd be like, hmm, they say, like George W. Bush, they say W is a racist. He very well might be. I don't know. Show me what what has he done that's racist other than Katrina, which some people say is racist. Other people say he was just stupid. I mean, W.A. wasn't, wasn't the smartest president. He wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. So I don't know. But you still think, well, maybe that maybe that was or maybe that was. This is a documented bigot. He has been sued for bigotry and racist. He's a sexist and a homophobe. He is a bigot. There is no... There's no getting around it. Oh, well, you know, he may or he might be. No, he threw. But yes, but yes, yes, a boss. You know how to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So we're going to do what we're going to do and we're going to do it anyway. See what I'm saying? So I, I don't know. I don't know about my people sometimes. I really don't. I try. I try to do the best I can with what I get, you know, but um, that's the end of the show. It actually went around the same time as any other shows probably you know i get to get to talking and, and get long with it and stuff like that now sorry about the, the difficulties so um that's going to be the end of this show tomorrow will be uh, big rich live we'll be talking about um uh, oprah winfrey's uh mini movie that came out uh on the latch latch family and some other stuff that we'll talk about maybe i might take uh maybe one or two questions we'll have to see on how how that goes but uh, in the meantime, in between time, stay safe, stay blessed, stay woke. Peace, and I'm out of here.